Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I like the beard, growing it out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what shall we talk about we we shall talk talk about breakfasts what should be we have in breakfasts sorry somebody was just trying to call me so what'd you say? I, I said that we should uh, talk what we should have in breakfast or for <laughs> dinner. I haven't broken my fast yet. I'm thinking of banana. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I am thinking of a pizza. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll serve the first ping pong ball, I guess. So I've noticed the seeker. <laughs> um, they tend to think in terms of I'm having a negative thought. If I have a positive thought, that will solve the problem when the problem is having a thought rather than not. Or they think if I have a positive emotion, that will solve the negative emotion, which in fact, having feeling anything like the reset yeah. button is to not think anything or feel anything and not be anyone. And there's joy in that. There's peace in that. There's rest in that. But it's not a positive thought or a positive feeling. It's no thought, no feeling. Yes. Means they, they are thinking that uh, someone, someone is there which needs to fix something. Yeah. There's a broken somebody that's incomplete that needs to be filled in and patched up. No. The way I joke around, I say it's like... Uh, somebody hammering away at their own shadow <laughs> trying to fix it <laughs> like there's nothing there <laughs> yeah i know it looks like there's a shape of i know there's nothing there <laughs> it's a it's an illusion it's an effect it's a play of light <laughs> we are shadow creatures in an ocean of clear light it's a flying horse what's that it's it's a flying horse yeah So in the Phaedrus, was that Plato? The Phaedrus. Yeah. They talk about uh, <laughs> they talk about a chariot with two horses, a white one and a black one, and uh, that's like the morality thing. And there's a guy in the chariot being drawn by his good and bad karmas, if you will. And the way I like to put that is, I say there's one gray horse pulling an empty chariot. <laughs> 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 it's it's the story of the seeker of the what seeker seeker Sida? Uh, seeker oh yeah. gotcha yeah, the seeker thinks they're in a chariot with a white and black horse. And yeah. <laughs> what, what are you drinking? Is it water or coffee? Green tea with ginger. Oh, ginger adds to the taste, I think. And it helps with my my stomach and my autoimmune symptoms and yeah it's good for you yeah but not for the seeker <laughs> yeah ginger's deadly for the seeker no, i was kidding <laughs> it's very different no <laughs> that's the thing right it's all the same there's nothing but sameness yeah yeah but you are back with your this side and this side is not there. <laughs> the non-dual <Hey>. headphones. 
because I, I got to keep one ear to listen with, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Means uh, uh, whenever you start listening to this message, uh, Talking about these stuffs becomes means very uh, light. Previously, whenever I used to talk about this, I used to be very serious. But yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's a there, there's a tendency. Yeah, it can be taken too heavily. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, or the way uh, if you want enlightenment, lighten up. Yeah, there's a an element of humor and lightness that is very healing to the trauma of having thought you were a person or having been tricked yes. by the human brain and the seeking energy into a belief. And every belief is a limit. Yes, no matter what the belief is, it can be uh, material one or a spiritual one yeah it's deeper than our little monkey heads can grasp <laughs> yes it's deeper you know, than this yeah. it's deeper than this yeah you have got slightly less than me or is it same <laughs> i think it is oh, no, you've, you've got more going on. I, I, I recently trimmed it. <laughs> it's, it's very like a jungle in my case. <laughs> That's our nature. Everything yeah. the jungle demonstrates. <clears throat> it's such a romantic gesture, this universe. Because it's like... You're willing to experience such pain and suffering just to be surrounded by others. Yes, you are right. What, what, what if I mix more water in your green tea? Will it taste slightly better or less? I've got water as a backup. Well, I mean, we make tea with water. I think tea was probably invented by having a <clears throat> a big vat of water just sitting there and then something fell into it or something you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> yes, human, exactly. All, exactly all the best things all the most brilliant ideas are accidents <laughs> like you, you stumble across oh wow oh well wow. oh wow this works but it's never yeah. oh i'm gonna i'm gonna think it out yeah, logically yeah, yeah. figure out no, no no it's all all the really potent genius innovation just happens you have got a good haircut i think i also need to get it <laughs> i like i like the sides being short i think that looks good yes yes and the air passes through yeah it's much That's cooler <laughs> yeah i get hot easily cooler. i'm sure it's worse in india yeah <laughs> yeah here it's extreme extreme yeah no wonder the devotees go totally bald yeah <sighs> it's humorous. <laughs> actually whenever we keep silent something connects and we we laugh mm -hmm.
So what are your thoughts on death? Uh, I think uh, the it's it's just uh, a label you can say means uh, if you see scientifically also there is no death means all the elements of the body are eternal because water will never die means it will never get consumed so yeah, I you know they, that, they say yeah. energy can't be destroyed or created yeah and i like to give people the trick question of how much energy exists within a dream but we can see how energy awareness bliss kind of go together yes so awareness you could say awareness can't be destroyed or created that this hidden bliss can't be destroyed or created it's just not something we are directly always in touch with from the human perspective yes and yet most of the, the humans are not most of the humans are not in touch with it with the awareness aspect of life people talk about awareness and consciousness as if they're the same thing but i tend to view awareness as more primary consciousness seems to imply embodiment and it's it also tends to imply something that can be lost or gained created and destroyed and i agree <laughs> But it's not awareness. Consciousness and awareness are two different things, in my opinion, the way I use them anyway. Or, yes, uh, yes, you are right. Or the way Howard actually, would put it, is he would say, consciousness is the dream of separation. Yes. It is the story of a rain in time and space. Actually, in, in Advaita Vedanta, we are uh, taught as two different things, awareness and consciousness. Mm. Very because good. in deep sleep there is no sense of existence there is no consciousness yeah, no, exactly. but there is awareness but there right. is awareness yes exactly and even when they um give you anesthesia and you become unconscious there's still awareness there <laughs> actually it's a, there is a lot of confusion which is created among the seekers because of uh, the uh, not splitting the two words right. into different compartments. Yeah, that's a huge thing. You know, it's a. Even some sages say they're interchangeable and there isn't such a thing. And it's like, well, yes. If you said there's no such thing as consciousness, I would agree. If you said everything is made out of consciousness, I would almost agree. And I'd say, well, can we call it awareness? Yeah. That actually, if you look, uh, there is a more primal thing than awareness, which, which uh, when we keep quiet, we are in touch with that. We might call that real. Yeah. There are these radical non-duality uh, speakers. When, whenever they speak, uh, there is something which goes, means we beyond awareness, means for in my apparent path there was at the beginning there was consciousness means and then i moved to awareness and then uh, when i came across this message then both were seen as dream means yeah yeah there's something more primordial and essential than even awareness and that's kind of the the secret truth of our hidden being and it doesn't even require awareness yeah that's why they say this or what is means everything yeah everything direct means direct means uh, can't grasp it that's why yeah. the, that's why the less people listen to the message because right. it's too direct yeah it's it's never going to be popular in the mainstream 
no one is ever going to make a huge following within a radical yeah. non-dual context because it's too uncompromising. It goes directly against the masses' norms. And so they murdered Jesus. They murdered Socrates for being too direct. Yeah. Because they wanted a path to survive as a seeker. They wanted, and they wanted to cling to their delusions. And they wanted to pretend like they were experts, that they knew what they were doing, and that it was the best way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But the first time I listened to the messages, it was like. Wait, someone was calling me again, the telemarketer this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. Means today there is some kind of other type of flow, which I am seeing because of the breaks in between. Mm. Means before when we had. Uh, without any breaks, then it was another type thing. But today it is something other. It means I can feel more rhythmical today. Yeah, there's like a different vibe every day. I do a talk. I notice there's like a theme of the day, even sometimes, and things like that. It's like a whatever is wanting to speak itself for whatever reason. It's just nature communicating with itself within a dream. There's a greater functioning. You know, humans love to yes. imbalance ecosystems and do stupid things. And they try to undo what they did that they thought that, you know, you can't fix a perfect world. And any, any attempt to do so is, you know, going to be demonstrated to be unbalanced and to need to be yes. undone. So whatever human activity, or, or another way to put this too is like, you know, I used to think in terms of like, oh, you know, I wonder how the animals view humans. It must be weird for them to see skyscrapers and telephone poles and, and roads. But no, this is their everyday. That's just nature to them, too. Like, there's nothing yes. unnatural. Like, the birds like following the highways. They get a straight path. The, the squirrels like to run across the power lines. Um, nature adapts there's no we're not separate from nature we just tell ourselves we are that's where the weirdness comes in for the human experience the human condition it's telling itself that it's separate from nature because it feels that way in order to construct a persona to live an extra five minutes as the body or something <laughs> yes definitely It's, it's so different today, means I can feel some type of means vibration. Some type of what? So, some type of means energy or vibration mm. in the communication. And there's uh, two levels of the momentum of how we feel and interact with the world, which dips into even how Western kind of magic works. And there's two levels, you know, there's like the biochemical cellular level where your body is producing these chemicals that make you feel a certain way. And we call that emotion. And whatever you're feeling, it's your body assumes you want to keep doing that. And the more you can inhabit the way you actually want to feel more often, the way you will, you actually feel that way more often. And the same is true energetically. So if we inhabit a very kind of a, a humble, quiet lightness, there's a bliss there. Yeah. And there's an energetic subtlety. 
yeah means whenever i talk to means here i i always feel uh, with with you i don't feel any tension in, in this area means, uh, but whenever i am interacting with a uh, person who is not into yeah this then there is some i can feel their <laughs> constriction me too yeah here it's just to relax means uh, just sensations of the body means there is nothing constrict- constricting it yeah there's nobody trying to force either one of us into a story right now yeah means we are not trying to convince anything it's just yeah yeah like, it's very spacious it's this is like um these talks are like my my practice you know this is my i kind of inhabit the non meditational kind of soak chen type awareness yeah i kind of go in and out of that throughout my talks and so i noticed that you know when i tell people like oh yeah you know, i'm going to do 9 hours of talks today Like, oh my god like you're overworking yourself I was like no this is like this is fun this is my leisure time this is uh both parties become charged with this energy and it's very blissful and it's interesting too because to the suffering ego mind bliss is seen as a threat yes <laughs> it's a threat <laughs> to the reality of my story as a suffering me and so it will try to sabotage the flowering of bliss yeah it is resistant yeah that's what that's what the me is is a form of resistance and it's just like in a, an electrical wire if there's no resistance that that energy that electricity moves much smoother through that wire with with no resistance yes. and with no me the energy is no longer relegated to the domain of too subtle to detect or understand or use and yeah. i even had i even had the thought upon awakening in the first few days i think when i could still see the the energy shimmering in the plants and animals type of solar energy it looked like type of like golden energy and it was so obvious and i could feel the energy in my body i've always been sensitive to the energy in my body but after waking it was so much more um obvious and not subtle that i had the thought like oh i wonder if all these maps for energy work systems throughout all these traditions are intended for the awakened i mean obviously you yeah. can use it before then but it seems like there's no direct access to that until awakening and there's also no direct access to the non-dual state until awakening and yet some people have direct access to that non-dual state and they have never had an energetic experience even though you me tony parsons and lisa karens would all agree that this shift is an energetic shift primarily yeah because of uh i think that you you just mentioned that you can do 9 hours talks means it's just because you don't have any resistance means yeah. the electricity is just it doesn't out. burn me out yeah exactly yeah even if i was talking to yeah it's interesting it's like a no <laughs> i had somebody criticize me yesterday and they said uh you know i watched some of your videos and i don't think you realize you're kind of uh you know what they said yeah they said like uh you know i don't think you realize how you're coming off and like you know you're showing your ego and i said well are you sure i'm unaware of that <laughs> you know yeah. so is it possible that i'm just radically honest and fully transparent 
Yeah. But you know, even even the little following of haters or critiques or critics, like even that's yeah. so welcome. That's so important for um like on Facebook and things for the public audience to see how the awakened mind interacts with every type of belief, every type of resistance, every type of structure, every type of yeah. limit. And how it spontaneously responds with an antidote to that. Yes, definitely. Means, so I thought that was funny. Uh, they, they, yeah. you know, oh, you're unaware of it. It's like, well, no, I'm intentionally like showing you the gritty nature of what this is and isn't. Because there's so many teachers that try to ham this up and polish it into a light that's yeah. packaged for the the seeking mind to accept, and yet that's not ultimately helpful. They they like to paint it with colors on the outside. And and one thing one thing I've noticed that. Uh, uh, you mentioned that somebody was saying that uh, you are showing off or like that. It's energy just flows so naturally that uh, self-esteem increases. Oh, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, people noticed that too. They said, you know, wow, there's such a raw confidence there. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah, because, because they, because the speaking is not happening from preconceived position it's just unfixed so right. anything can come out yeah yeah that's the thing right i don't care how i come off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point yeah yeah there's no there's no self-consciousness there's no poisoned self-awareness yes there's just the raw immediacy of the intuited just being, even though there is no being, a separate <laughs> being. Yeah, a, a lot of energy is sucked in trying to means, uh, be like something or behave in a certain way. Yeah. It's funny, they said, uh, you know, a hundred people could watch this talk and get a hundred different things out of it you know, view it a hundred different ways and think a hundred different things of us or yada, yada, yada. exactly oh well i don't care i don't and care so, what they do with these words <laughs> it's just a different type of sunglasses the white light is the same the glasses can interpret it with regard yeah. to their respective colors the red will say it's red. The green will say it's green, but the white light is the same. Yeah. Should just sit here for nine hours <laughs> like a statue actually see I, long, I like see how long they can like watch that. it without turning it off <laughs> <laughs> actually i like those moments very much and this there is just me too but then uh, i feel like the the seekers watching us i'm like i don't want to fucking see this just sitting there yeah click <laughs> Means, <laughs> after, after that after that nobody will see what we talk if we just <laughs> sit there for five minutes like that yeah it's very enjoyable for the sage for the seeker it's very frustrating to try to access that state very boring for the sage is very enjoyable very effortless very blissful it feels like dreamless sleep when we come out of that yes so if i if we go into that state for five minutes 
and then we stop. It's like taking an hour nap. It's that powerful. Not that it can replace sleep, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it just resets the body. Yeah. It resets. Like, for example, in Bun with Buddhist uh, meditation, they say that suggestion is like a dreamless yeah. sleep. Yeah. We Nirvana are, we are accessing, accessing it now. <laughs> yeah. And we are just looking. Yeah, the candle keeps going out and coming back on. It's never actually on. Yeah, in, uh, in India, there's a mudra. And one way to interpret this mudra is stop. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I do like this, it's 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 this raises. <laughs> I can't describe it. Yeah, the empty hand. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and even the most mundane talks become amazing. Like we can talk yeah. about uh, good good breakfasts. Sports. And I, I, I wasn't, I didn't used to be like that as a seeker. I could only talk about deep things and the impersonal and, and now I'm far more comfortable talking about the personal, ironically. <laughs> yeah. That's I used to shy away from it because it made me feel weird. Now I realize what it is. It doesn't make me feel weird. I'm not that. That's why I don't care what this does or how it comes off or how people view it. Yeah. Because I'm not this. I don't even feel like I represent this. It's just happening. There, there is no self-conscious of the body or of any yeah. type of personality. Yeah. Like, I don't care how my, I mean, on a certain level, like, I care to a certain extent, like, I not care, but like, I, I groom myself a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. If I if it's, I'm it's well just groomed playful. or not, when I show up to the talk, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. The grooming also happens like just a child playing at a garden. It's not taken seriously. Yeah, it's just an ape instinct. Everything. Yeah. That's all it is. I think you like black a lot. It's probably my favorite color now. I like to wear it, especially. I have two. Black and white. Mm. I like indigo as well. I, uh, when, I, when I do meditate, which is very, very seldom, very random and solid, when I do meditate, with my eyes closed, I mean, and when I used to meditate as a seeker, which again, wasn't very often. Whenever I felt drawn no. to. Yeah. Um, no meditation can just happen like this. Yeah. You stop talking and that's. Yeah, non-meditation. So chin awareness. Yeah, non-meditation. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but you know, when I do close my eyes and meditate, I see, I used to do this a lot more. I don't really do it that often now, but I used to see, um, what Yogananda would refer to as the spiritual eye. So, and yeah. it would, I would see two of the three aspects of it. Um, I would see the indigo circle kind of form and then like rings of soft golden light coming off it, like I'm going down a tunnel. But he talks about a white star at the center and I've never seen that, not while doing that type of meditation anyway. But that indigo color, of that circle, of that blob-like circle. Um, and as it stabilizes, it becomes more and more of a circle. It's more of a, like a inky blob, but it's like, it's like it's behind the blackness that we see. You know, it's like the, we close our eyes, we see the black and we see like random static of colors. And that's all just physical. That's all just the cones and rods in the eye 
de being depleted of certain chemicals that detect colors and just yes. you know the black and the static that's all just physical but then this kind of astral light can arrive and at first it's subtle then it becomes less and less subtle as the logical analytical mind quiets down and you see this brilliant at least I do anyway, and apparently Yogananda did. They talk about it in the news. This brilliant indigo that I've never seen anything close to on Earth. Like, it's not a, a physical color. And the closest thing I can describe it as is cobalt glass and sunlight. Because indigo and blue is like the darkest possible color for the human eye to detect. But this is a very radiant... You might call it an astral color or an astral light colorless and, uh, color it's like I, I look for that color in the world and i get excited when it comes close oh there oh that's that's it kind of almost <laughs> but i've never seen it in the physical world but again the closest thing something similar to cobalt and sunlight yeah that's why you like that color i think yeah it's one of the reasons it just resonates for some reason and, uh, but after awakening, yeah, I, uh, I'm more fond of black, yeah, than I was for sure. Yeah. But I'm also more fond of like the energy of the villain. Yeah, the energy of the villain. Everybody wants to be the hero. Like nobody <laughs> wants to be the joker. Yeah. Oh, Andrew, you're a bodhisattva. You're a hero of competition. No, no, no. I'm the bad guy. I'm, I'm the villain. I'm the Joker. <clears throat> to the mind. To the seeking mind. Yeah. I'm its worst enemy. I had a funny thought yesterday, and that thought was, sages are like salsa. And they come in many varieties. There's mild, medium, spicy, and ghost pepper. <laughs> and I'm more yeah. of a medium. I think I'm about a medium, somewhere between medium and spicy, maybe. Depends on the day. You are all, yeah. all the flavors. Whatever's needed, moment to moment, context to context. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that? Uh... Previously, uh, I think you may <clears throat> also have experienced that uh, you couldn't shift between personalities. Means you had one fixed type yeah. of persona. Yeah. But yeah, now I agree. it's flexible. Absolutely. 100%. Very good point. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have full access to the entire toolkit of human thought, feeling, and behavior. A sage is capable of anything. We all are, but yeah, the sage is more able to comfortably slip out of the story narrative of that limited personality construct. Yeah. And so we're able to be everything at once in a way, yeah. It's as if water like it can be in any cup with regards to the shape of the cup. Comfortably, yeah. Yeah, comfortably. Exactly. And it's it's not that uh, it's uh, just for some people. It's it's for everyone, but it's blocked through the uh, resistive energy of the wire. And not everybody would want this. Yes. Because the people that, uh, like in, in Zen, they say things like, uh, it's better to never become a seeker. But if you do, you're fucked. You have to follow it to completion <laughs> or else you're fucked. It's yeah. better to never begin seeking. But now that you have, there's no, you can't, there's no choice. You, you're, you're bound to that. You can't, oh, well, I'm just going to, oh, I'm just going to stop seeking. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're going to give up spirituality and seek something else, that seeking energy, until it ends, now that it's begun. 
Yeah. <clears throat> if you start your two months, finish your. Yeah, I mean, another way to interpret that, though, obviously, like the sage is very comfortable in the ordinary life, in a way that the seeker tends to not be. They want something more than what is here now. And, you know, this is plenty for us. We're just grateful to still be alive and to be at all. And uh, just the joy of that still being is plenty. And that's what. Yeah, just. Just doing this is thousand times of pleasure. Yeah, yeah. This is the most. Yeah, this it's like a. Yeah, it's profoundly inherently enjoyable. Even the. It's interesting, you know. It's all perfect. It's like a. I was driving today and I thought, you know, I wonder if like even my, <clears throat> even my like autoimmune issues and like body pain and stuff, I wonder if that helps boost my awareness somehow, <laughs> you know, it's like the pain keeps you alert <laughs> in a way, you know, it's like you can't yes. avoid like, um, but it, that can only be appreciated after awakening, pain, suffering. Um, not that I prefer that, I don't, <laughs> but I can, I can see how it's necessary. You know, it's yeah. an evolution thing and it's, it's, it's uh, kind of dark, you know, that uh, evolution has required such tremendous amounts of pain to make all these systems, these bodies functional um, and fear, pain and fear are the two biggest motivators of human behavior for the seeker, especially, but human behavior in general. Yeah. <clears throat> Hope is fear is ignorance. Yeah. I think, I think your mint tea is over. What's that? Your your mint mint tea is finished in yep, the bottle. Switch in the water. <laughs> switch in the water. It's I think I think uh, uh, whenever I don't look into the uh, into the mirror. I can't feel my beard, but when I look into the camera, I can also feel that. It's getting <laughs> bigger. So are you planning on growing it out? or? Uh, actually, I am a bit confused, but whatever yeah. whatever plays out, exactly I think. Right. See, I, I've always been grow. the type that, uh, I mean, you'd swear I'm like a convict on the run or something. So, Cause I, throughout my life, I've changed my appearance like more frequently than is like societally acceptable or something it's like i'm always changing my appearance and it's partly because there was an intuited subconscious knowing or realization that there is no separate self that stays the same through time and if you are more intelligent and more intuitive you are also more likely to change gears more quickly and to evolve and grow and catalyze faster and faster especially if there's no resistance of the ego. Yeah. Most of the people like to keep their looks the same way because they think that what might the mainstream society say. Yeah, on their and looks. if they age or their weight changes or they lose their hair or they get a scar or they lose a finger, then they get self-conscious about it. They shouldn't. I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't, it's silly. Yama and Yama is for toddlers. They don't need that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's part of the expression of the non-dual awareness that's been lurking here all along. And that's one of the things it did subconsciously and it still does it now. It's, uh, it always changes the appearance. It, <clears throat> and like you said, the personality will radically shift around even and uh, almost to a shocking degree at times. And yet that's so powerful if you're talking to hundreds of different people, 
that require a different response and a different, like sometimes people ask me a question, like I kind of, uh, I kind of pride myself a little bit on directly answering questions instead of yes. not, because <laughs> it's easy not yes, to I like, I like. play that game. But at the same time, I get flack sometimes on, on Facebook and random groups, but uh, they'll say, well, you're, you didn't answer my question directly. And it's like, well, it's the wrong question. You know, it's like, uh, if you ask the Buddha the wrong question, he'd just smile at you. He wouldn't respond because it's the wrong energy or the wrong vibe you're bringing to that discussion. Yes. So sometimes the best response isn't actually a verbal, logical minded answer in words, but rather a demonstration. Yeah. yeah, a transmission, Devices. absolutely, of clarity, of energy, of shakti, of, of awareness. The, that's why there is, I think, 14 questions in Buddhism, which are called as indescribable, means unanswerable questions, on which Buddha mm -hmm. just kept silent, means he didn't spoke on those questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I noticed that about you that, yes, you are pretty good at directly answering questions because in first session with you, I saw that, that yeah. I asked some questions and it's just because of the flow. It's, you are in yeah. that flow state. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I, I even put that in my, my YouTube channel little description that I answer questions directly because there's plenty of non-duality speakers that don't and they're very good at not answering questions directly and that's fine you know that's that's helpful for some people but the people who want direct answers can come to me type of deal and that's the thing too right like uh I said before sages are like salsa mild medium spicy ghost pepper yeah I can inhabit any of those but there's people that tend to inhabit one of those more often and most of the time and there's people that prefer mild salsa and so they will go to a mild sage and they'll get what they want there's people that prefer a medium spiciness type salsa and they you know it's like that type of thing it's like uh if the fire is too hot it'll burn them unless they're they're ready for it and so it's kind of like stages of of where you're at in it but it's also what's needed based on the lived experience of that alleged seeker you know, some people have been traumatized by the word God, by their religion, and it's a deep trauma. And so they're relieved to hear, no, there's no separate being called God judging you. And yet there's people who were the other way around where the word God is a good thing and it heals them. You know, so it's interesting that type of thing, how that works. There's people that ramble on and on about awareness. There's people ramble on and on about only the brain. And there's people in between there's people that only talk about energy, not liberate. Like there's so much here, you know. So much, so much information. I yeah. I'd like to mention one thing that uh, I re I read with Wittgenstein, and uh, mm. he he said something that uh, used theory of meaning. He gave that a word uh, is has meaning only to its use. Yeah. If there is no exactly. use to it, then there is no meaning. Like you mentioned exactly. that. The same word God has meaning for some, but no meaning right. for others. Yeah, it could it could cause a nervous breakdown response in somebody and someone else would feel tremendous relief. You hear all the time about, you know, it's just so different from any ideology. It's so the awakened state is so different from any philosophy, any religious stance, any ideology. It's wiped clean of all those limits. Yeah, beginner's mind. You are accessing the Shakti path now. Actually, you mentioned about meditation. 
right now we were have we were doing meditation means yeah every yeah. moment is a meditation now even even before awakening even even before my kundalini arising event i started to catch on to a catalyzed deepening of this clarity um it kind of reveals itself in layers to the extent that the, I guess, energetic system is primed or ready for that. And the human body and the energy system are so intimately connected that it would be hard to call them two separate things. And so this is like, um, that's why embodiment is so important. But yeah, the, exactly. these talks, yeah. there's so much potential here at all times and that's why i usually leave it up to uh the other to kind of bring up what they want to talk about or whatever they wherever they want to go with it because it's like whatever their mind is chewing on or their energy system is kind of trying to grok that's what they're gonna talk about whatever is arising you know and it's all contextual People get frustrated, seekers get frustrated when the sage flip-flops between relative and absolute. And when they, yeah. they say one thing and then the next sentence, they say the total opposite thing to someone else. Someone asks the Buddha a question. He, oh no, it's not that, it's this. And someone else says the exact same question. He says the total opposite thing. Well, it's because the, the sage is able to detect what is needed for that conundrum, for that energetic block, if you will, for that mental neural pattern momentum that inertia of the electrical grooves running through the brain that you know what i mean yes. so whatever can break out of that tunnel vision focus and it's going to look very different from person to person and part i wonder if that's why like in zen they they do it privately you know it's just the Zen master and one person, they close the door. No one can hear what they're saying. It's part of the reason, because if you heard Zen master give someone else the total opposite response to the same question you asked, that might freak you out. Yeah, it will confuse the seeker. Yeah, right. That's why I, I think there are there have been many types of speakers for whom there are not many audience because they are all, always contradicting every moment. Yeah, and the, and the sage rejoices and delights in that contradiction that the, that the seeker finds so frustratingly unpalatable and hypocrite. It's like, it's like a, hip, uh, a hypocritical paradox to the seeking mind because it's only looking at the words, what the words mean to the mind based on my lived experience, they will. It's very limited. Yeah. That's, the, that's the prison or the imaginary prison itself. Uh, for the seeker, everything is solid, means the words are solid. So if uh, a speaker uses words contradictory, then that solidity is challenged. While as the yeah. sage, for the sage, it's more like, gas or liquid everything. yeah exactly it's so like he's vapor, able like to cloud. yeah vapor yeah. it can expand and contract and as it expands it feels like a vapor when we go quiet and we enjoy that stillness that non-dual pristine awareness we feel like a an expanding cloud or the sky becoming bigger and bigger and clearer, and that, clearer. that's why i think it is called spirit now yeah. now now i am getting the point uh, or yeah, so fire it's called spirit it's a good point yeah spirit is not some uh, that they call that goes to hell and heaven it's right yeah. here in between yeah. our talks yeah
actually in, in between means one second ago everything just felt like in so uh, was blurry so everything got blurry like visuals or yeah. that kind is now also there is just directly at the screen and everything outside is blurred and everything is in that media see yeah it's funny how enjoyable silent stillness is to the sage and how very different that is to the seeker to the seeker that's very boring <laughs> and very yeah. almost depressing uncomfortable and, uh, also yeah very uncomfortable for the seeking mind if the awakened mind it's uh, the most enjoyable <laughs> yeah it's almost addictive to the sage or it can be like i i, I kind of understand why somebody would would uh, potentially want after awakening to be in that state for 12 hours a day or something i i wouldn't personally want to do that but i i, I kind of get it and yet if the seeker sat there and meditated for 12 hours they that'd be quite traumatizing i think yeah and in in the meetings also i see that a lot more questions are asked and uh, i don't think that that amount of questions uh, uh will come with regard to the message means a lot more questions are asked than usual hmm. but it's also part of the play so yeah i love i love questions that's why i directly answer them and uh You know, it's kind of like um hmm. It's like hacking a computer. The sage is trying to hack the the mind of the seeker into not suffering into having direct access to this clarity. And yet it can be quite uncomfortable. for the secret times it's almost like doing surgery without anesthesia at times you know but uh yeah yes yes like an energetic or a neurological type thing even though it's non invasive surgery I, i can do it from a distance but but the, these types of talks have a an apparent effect upon the biological and energetic system neurologically cellularly chemically and yeah energetically and that happens between sages that happens between seekers that happens from sage to seeker it happens between plants and animals it's happening all the time energy exchange Organic. different qualities and quantities yeah N- natural upon awakening i coined a term almost immediately natural energy it's spelled the same way natural energy is spelled with natural energy that life force energy it was just so obvious so obvious upon awakening it was just running through nature as nature natural energy the aliveness that's another one of my favorite words aliveness it's the same thing yeah uh aliveness is just a great word i also like it yeah Yeah, it's one of my favorite words. Really good. And yet life is a myth. And so obviously <laughs> death is even more of a myth. Yeah. Because we don't even know if if death like no matter how you slice it, death can't be experienced regardless of what the metaphysical outcome or the ultimate nature of it. either way, no matter what, death can't be experienced. if we take the metaphysical view that it's all just physical brain shuts down you're gone 
well, then you don't experience death. If you keep going after death, then that's not death. So obviously our idea of death is severely limited and misguided and short-sighted. Yeah. It's based on preconceived upheld beliefs. Yeah, and it's, I hate to talk too much about quantum physics without a disclaimer caveat here now, but you know, you see a lot of woo woo new age silliness with people desperately trying, oh no, 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 science validates my belief system. See, quantum physics. And yet, however, having said that, um, yeah, there's almost every day, there's a new breakthrough in quantum physics that's directly saying the same thing the non-duality speakers are saying every step of the way. Yes, the first one is nothing is happening. That is what there's they no are time. saying. Yeah. yeah. I see I see a lot of similarities between quantum phys physics, quantum mechanics and radical non-duality. Yeah, isn't that interesting too that uh, the materialist scientism worldview paradigm is slowly dying now and being replaced with what the mystics have been saying for millennia. Our best cutting edge investigation into material reality is telling us that it's not physical and that there's no time there's no separation that there's no direct causality and that it's inherently spooky and mysterious and dependent upon the observing witnessing awareness we could even yeah. argue that Awareness is the unified field from which strings bubble up within a dream. And yet when I look up at the stars at night, it's mind blowing to think that the universe is bigger than you can comprehend, that there's more going on than a human can comprehend. And that's just the physical obvious layer of reality. And even that's infinitely mind-blowing. Just that, you know, crazy. Great. Yes, nowadays uh, with the advance of quantum mechanics, I don't think that that theoretical physics is going to stay for long because yeah. of the advance. Yeah, I think theoretical and experimental physics will merge pretty soon here and so will human the human animal and the machine and it's a good thing not a spooky dark bad thing it's a great thing it's a really great thing you know people <laughs> the more conservative mind view of the older generations tends to be one of uh, not liking what's happening next and the young people tend to not regard the past with enough appreciation of how far we've come and how hard it is for the previous generations. And yet it's, there is no generation gap as well. And yet technology is getting to a point now. You know, I mean, <laughs> fear and the unknown is hilarious because, you know, back when the train was invented, physicists and doctors started freaking out. And they said, you can't go 30 miles an hour. You'll, you'll turn to liquid. You'll be killed instantly. If you go 30 miles an hour, you'll be killed instantly. <laughs> And now we have bullet trains that go 700 miles an hour and everybody's fine. <laughs> you have rocket ships that go, you know, they're fine. <laughs> so obviously that's, the, and that was our best current physics and medical science at the time, but it's this newfangled thing. Get your yeah. torches and pitchforks. We got to tear it down, stop it from happening. Same thing with AI and robotics and yeah, uh, I will. Be, I will not be su surprised if quantum physics starts saying exactly the same thing as it already has. Yeah. As it's just it's be to see it as a demonstration. Yeah. yeah, as you said, it'll it'll stop being theoretical because it's going to be integrated. We're going to have quantum computing and things like that. And you know, 
quantum physics is straight up telling us that, yeah, a particle can functionally be in two places at once. What does that mean? Well, there's no time and space is what it means. There's no actual locality. It's all non-local awareness playing with itself, as itself, through itself, as us, as this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, you said it's circular. Is this going Everything back? I just said is total horseshit. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going means you you said something like evolution is going circular. Means previously we had Vedas. Now we come to this theoretical sciences or physical sciences. Yeah. And now we are going back to that. Yeah. If we if we look at it as if we are if we look at the ancient um, system of the yugas, and we say we're in. If we look at the uh, Sri Yukteswar's writings, which I tend to agree with, and it, it's not just him and his one little book, like every civilization on earth has come to this understanding. Um, yeah, there's this grand cycle and we're in Dwapara Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, which is like the age of energy. Like, yeah, of course, we're actually not in the age of materialism anymore. We're in the age of energy and we have been since Newton. Since like 1700, we've been in the age of energy. We're just getting it ramped up. That's why there's nuclear power plants and solar panels. And so many people are having, you know, Kundalini type stuff going on. And there's the age of energy. Yeah. We have electricity. I mean, that's the most obvious realization of it. Like there's a light bulb. Oh, yeah, the age of energy. Right, right. It's a dynamic age. Dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Just like this. It's very easy to be dynamic. Previously, I used to think now. that. Yeah, exactly. That dynamic. How can we be dynamic? Means being static <laughs> is just. Yeah, how just can I be more that. spontaneous? The seeker asks. Yeah. Himself. <laughs> Sage only sees spontaneity. Yeah. That's all there is. All behavior is spontaneous. And how how are we shifting across topics? It's just previously we talked about quantum mechanics. Now we are talking about this. Now something other will show up. Yeah. So it's beautiful. That's it's beauty. Not deciding the content freehand. Yeah. Not preparing, not deciding, not expecting not controlling not resisting that is what is not the natural state yeah exactly right natural na state. yeah and the, the natural state comes with that that natural state comes with natural energy and natural awareness Every animal has that, but human beings are poisoned by this thing called self-awareness. And when we overcome that spontaneously, when it overcomes itself, there's still access to that. And yet, so the human, the human sage inhabits both perspectives at the same time. The same perspective as the wild animal and as the domesticated human person, they have access to both of those. Like the sage still obviously has access to the entirety of the dualistic mind. And- Yes, that's the point, that's the, the point. Non-dual awareness, yeah, yeah the awakened mind. And at so, the start, yeah. uh, at the start, everyone feels that I will be just in the non-dual state, but <laughs> <laughs> afterwards, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just, Right, exactly. Yeah, the, it's just uh, both dualistic and non-dual state. Yeah, now, exactly, and that's what non-duality is. That's that's where people get the wrong idea when when we use the word non-duality. Oh, it, versus duality? No, it includes that. <laughs> We're not trying to get rid of the rainbows and shit. No, it includes all that. It's not this gray, bleak, amorphous blob of a. No, it's has the same crispness, the same colorful complexity and and beauty and there's just freedom there and spaciousness and clarity 
it's it's energy. so void it's so void that it's too means everything it's flowing with light and shadows energy it's like a really complex knot and the two loose strings actually are connected you know it really complex, so complex the human mind can't ever comprehend what's going on. I mean, even space time itself is bent into itself like that, you know? It's like spaghetti. It's a spaghetti. Yeah. But not a confused one. Yeah, there's a, a purple flying spaghetti monster. And <laughs> you ever hear of that? Pastafarianism? They worship a god they revere as the flying spaghetti monster. It's like a joke religion somebody invented. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are it just there shows are many you how many religions. beliefs are you know yeah, and it's curtains and stage props all the way down and all the way up. You know, this is all just one big theater, one <laughs> big stage, one big stage of everything. Do you have any questions arising at all? Yes, one question. What is laughter? What is laughter? <laughs> so. <laughs> it's like um you know i just rambled on about how i directly answer questions i i feel like the need to limit myself into that rather than just leaving that there but you know yeah that's that's a that's a funny trick question i like that because it's on the one hand it's, it's one of, it's like those 14 unanswerable things it's like anything we say about it is inherently absurd because laughter is the response to absurdity on a certain level. We could say that as an evolved primate, it's a way to dissipate anxiety. And so somebody falls. <gasps> Are they okay? Oh, they're fine. Oh, <laughs> somebody fell. <laughs> because they're okay. But not until then. A monkey falls out of a tree. The other chimps, oh my God. And the monkey's fine. And they all start laughing. You know, it's that type of thing. It's a, an anxiety dissipation thing um, because human beings are in such a dark um, space as far as not knowing what's going on. And so laughter helps break us out of the anxious mentality of, oh, there's something serious and real happening and there's real danger when there's not. And on the other hand, it's revealing the absurdity of any story or any mentally fabricated meaning yes so it's revealing all to be a silly story from an absurd crazy monkey mind and it's also the dissipation <clears throat> the lightening of that dark heavy fear anxiety trauma vibe and so in that sense it's very healing yeah Uh, you you are pretty good at giving direct answers. Someone who can tell what is laughter so quickly is a direct answerer. And yeah, that's that's the funniest. That's might be the funniest trick question I've ever heard. On another, what is laughter? It's like anything I say next is laughable. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's the kind of the point 
that's kind of the pointless point of that question on a from a certain angle what is laughing like anything i say you could laugh it off whatever i say as a response could be just just laugh in my face about it because it's all just mental story nonsense or another good answer which wouldn't be very satisfying would be i don't know another good answer could be Or just get really, really intense. <laughs> Instead of bursting out laughing, don't you understand how serious this no, is? No, like this. <laughs> is a, uh, what to say? <laughs> Do you have any questions bubbling up? Yes. One I more. could ask you trick questions, but go ahead. Uh, uh, what to ask? Uh, And thinking. <laughs> Means I have to think a question. Uh, what is a cat? What is a what? What is a cat? A what? C C C A T. Oh, a cat. Cat is a necessary cog in a machine of a functional ecosystem, such that during the Black Plague in Europe, something like two thirds of all people were killed. Only a third of the population of Europe survived the Black Plague. And why did the Black Plague strike? Because of human unnatural intervention with the perfect ecosystem. What do I mean by that? Well, they, the Black Plague comes from a bacteria that originates from rats. And so it comes from rats. What happened was Christianity in Europe at the time was very superstitious and deluded. And they thought that cats were evil, that they were tied to the devil, that witches would keep cats as familiars. And that the cat was an evil thing. So they killed all the cats in Europe. If they found a cat, they killed it. And all the mice. And it killed two thirds of all the human beings in Europe at that time. Because of the unnatural human being thinking that they can make the world more perfect. Yeah. In Yellowstone, they had, they were allowing hunters to kill off all the gray wolves. And then all of a sudden there were no wolves and all the deer overtook the area, ate up all the grass and all the other animals that were going to eat that grass started dying off. And the entire ecosystem of that area was totally thrown out of balance. So then human beings that had killed off all the gray wolves reintroduced a bunch of gray wolves to the area and the area healed. When a cat is playing with a mouse, a human being walks by, a sensitive human seeker walks by and sees the cat torturing this mouse to death very slowly, like it's a little toy and it goes, oh my God. That poor thing must be suffering so much. What a fucking psycho that cat is. And what they don't realize is they're the only one suffering. The sensitive human seeker is the one suffering. And they're wanting to do something about that scene to end their suffering. 
but they think they're trying to end the suffering of the mouse. The mouse isn't suffering. The cat is programmed to be perfectly doing what it's doing, and it is, and it's functioning perfectly. And the mouse is in pain and trying to get away, and that too is perfect and orchestrated and programmed and engineered as a functional system of pain and fear, chemically, neurally, to try to get away from the cat. And the cat brings it in, torches it to death, meets it. And the human being wants to stop this to end their suffering. The seeking mind doesn't know that though. You're out in your yard one day, you're a sensitive seeking human ego mind and you see your cat destroy this rabbit and the rabbit's bleeding out and it's going to die for sure. It's losing blood and it's suffering. The seeking mind tells itself. It says, I have to do something to end the unnecessary suffering. Picks up a rock, ends the rabbit's life so that he doesn't have to suffer. And the human has then ended their own suffering. Yeah. So suffering to the extent that we feel it only exists in the human condition. And any attempt yes. to make the already perfect world more perfect is, is doomed to at least temporarily unbalance that whole system, whether it's an ecosystem or the climate of the entire globe or whatever it is. You know, there's space junk floating around the earth, however that plays into things. And yet everything a human does is technically natural, just like what the cat does. There's nothing wrong with the cat doing that. There's nothing wrong with the parasite that bores into the thing and does crazy things to the end. And there's nothing wrong with the human being that does all these crazy things either. But the reason the human is doing these things is out of a delusion that the that the human the human species is somehow separate from nature, and that then within that you are a separate being within that human species. So a cat is a functional form within a functional system and form is function. Or to put it in two words, me, ow. Me, ow. me, oh. ow. meow. You said it in a good way. <laughs> well, I uh I better get going. I do have another talk scheduled, but uh always a pleasure talking to you, my friend. No. It's gotta be a nine hour one. Cancel everything. 18 hours of stillness. <laughs> just raw intensity. No humor. Just <laughs> I, I want to publish this as well. Okay. Sounds good. I want to show my crazy beard to my audience. <laughs> Sage-like beard. No. No. Oh. Beard, beard like an animal. It's like a, in, in Buddhism, they talk about Bodhidharma. In Zen, Bodhidharma was the founder of. He looked like me, basically, you know, big bushy beard, and you know, kind of randomly placed in China, like he walked there. But they talk about, uh, you know, they all, you know, it's like a. So Zen comes from the West, from that perspective. It's like a paradox, and they say, why does the bearded barbarian have no beard? 
and he does. <laughs> this faceless face. But yes, we will we will definitely publish this one soon. And we'll we'll chat again soon as well. It's always a pleasure. And I appreciate you, yes. man. I I have 19% battery left in my phone. Yeah, I, I think I have less. So I gotta figure out why my cord's acting funny. But uh yeah. We'll talk again soon, buddy. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.